What is up as a figure hunter? And today we have a fun one. We're going to talk about what is so special about Garmin. And we're also going to talk about the rumored specifications of the Garmin 400 265 and 965, because I think these are going to be significant releases. So I wanted to sort of spread what I have seen or heard. I don't have any intel, but I want to spread what I've seen and heard so that we're all paying attention when they do come out, because I think these are going to be significant watches. Now, for this first part, what is so special about Garmin? I really started to think about this conceptually when I was doing the re-review for the Garmin Forerunner 255 a week or so ago, because as I was basically that review specifically was just to compare it against any of the other watches in its price range that either came out just before or after throughout all of 2022, after the uh, Forerunner 255 released in the beginning of June. And as I was thinking about it, I was thinking, uh, there's a lot to the Garmin 400 255, their base model at $350. But as I began to think further about it, I started thinking there's actually a lot that Garmin is doing that is somewhat cutting edge and industry leading and unlike other sports and training watches on the market today. So we're going to dive into some of those primary features. And then in the second part, you can obviously jump to a uh, you know, link in the timeline down below if you want to just jump straight to the 265, 965 uh, rumor mill. Those are all rumors. So before we get into this, first off, to each his own. Everybody has a different preference for what kind of look they want for a watch because although there are certain training features available in a number of watches, some people just like the certain look of one over the other. This video is just simply that in my sort of technical assessment, Garmin just has more features than everybody else. And so we're just going to sort of talk about some of the spe special features that they have that others don't only have a part of or don't have at all. And secondly, I want to just clear the, you know, lay it all out that my predispositions, my predisposition is that the Samsung Galaxy watch is not a sports and training watch. It does a little bit on the wellness side. It can track a basic workout, but the third-party apps are not as fully developed as the Apple Watch. It is not, in my opinion, something I even think of when I think of sports and training and wellness, real, you know, a watch that was is even competitive. Secondly, the Apple Watch. I think of the Apple Watch as barely a fitness and training watch, and only because of the third-party app development that you can pull in third-party apps to culminate a little bit of a clear picture of your wellness and a little bit of a clear picture of your training. So that's at the outset. You definitely can piece it together. And then last on my predisposition, I look at Huawei and Amazfit as up and coming contenders, but still a very limited one dimensional platform. If you take Amazfit's training load and aerobic and anaerobic training effect, for example, it so far in testing, it's just all not accurate. All the training load was peaked out on a 60 minute CrossFit workout. All the aerobic training effect, the anaerobic training effect, five, five, fives at the top of the spectrum on everything, training load included and recovery to everything. So I think that they're writing their own code or algorithms for those things. And I don't think they're writing it correctly. And then Huawei is similar, but not quite as bad. So they're writing their own codes for you know aerobic and anaerobic training effect and training load and recovery time. I just think it's a little bit more simple and it's got a long way to go to really be competitive in even those categories. So not expanding beyond it, but even those categories being more accurate and reliable. So with that, let's look at the list of things that I think Garmin is unique. We'll look at watches alongside it. Garmin is truly unique in the industry today. All right, so these are not in a particular order, but the first up is the dual band GPS, but not the dual band GPS, because there are a number of watches that have dual band GPS on them. What's unique about Garmin is that Garmin has sat IQ, which basically will switch back and forth to either use dual band or not use it based on conditions, coverage, and your exposure to the satellites available, which I think is a pretty, industry leading technology that they can use the power rich dual band or not use it. And you don't have to think about it. You don't have to gauge it. The watch just does it for you. That's pretty cool stuff. And it really takes advantage of the dual band GPS, but also power consumption and battery life for the watches. The second up is the full blown maps. So if you look at mapping, 
you have a version of mapping in the Apple Watch. And if you use an app called Workout Outdoors, then you'll have more access to mapping in the Apple Watch during a workout. Koros has mapping, but it's not connected to the real world. It's sort of like a, an overlaid picture of whatever you, where you, wherever you are on your plot, but it can't guide you anywhere. You can just see where you are and you can figure things out along the way. But Garmin's maps are full tilt, meaning it has got, number one, it's got more specifics and details than any of the other maps that are out there on other watches. You can see trail names, you can see river names, you can see street names, you can see retail shop names, and you can even navigate to wherever you want to go. On the watch itself, you can say, find me a Starbucks, and it'll find something of interest in a certain period of you know, distance, and it will route you to that feature item. If you find a trail, you want to go to a certain trailhead, it'll route you to the trailhead and you go hike the trail. So that is a considerable step above the sort of snapshot picture mapping that Koros has. And I haven't tested the Work Outdoors version of mapping on the Apple Watch, but it, because the Apple Watch doesn't have true mapping truly built into their hiking and training and running programs, I consider them to only have like sort of mapping light or an abbreviated version of it. Next, we'll talk about body battery. Now the body battery has been around for three and a half, four years, came out on like a Vivo something another device. And it is, I think, industry leading. So a lot of devices recently have talked about HRV, heart rate variability measurements. And you have some devices like the Polar will track HRV for four hours during your sleep. Whoop will track HRV throughout your night of sleep and summarize it. The Coros watch on most of their new watches will allow you to take snapshot HRV measurements. The Apple watch out of the box will take measurements every two to three hours. But if you elect that you have an AFib problem, it'll track it more frequently, but they don't stand behind it because if you look at the data, there are a number of erroneous data points in that broader spectrum HRV. So, okay, so that's HRV. What is that tracking? Now that is tracking nighttime related HRV or spot check only HRV. The body battery is a metric on Garmin's platform that's driven by 24 seven HRV. Recently, Garmin added HRV nightly tracking and it's full in-depth or heart rate variability analysis compared to your seven day trends. But I'm not even talking about that with a significant differentiator on the Garmin platform. I'm talking about body battery because it is watching your system all day long, all the time. And it doesn't show you the HRV values, but it correlates it to a stress score at any point in time. And that stress correlates to either depletion of your internal resources or rejuvenation. So if you take a nap, you see a little rejuvenation in your body battery. If you have a super stressful day, you see a decline in your body battery. And if you're sick, there's so many people that have reported sickness where you can see the impact at all times. They're not just waiting to see what whoop says when you wake up in the morning, but seeing the heart rate variability impact all the time. And you can see your recovery start to begin as your stress falls down, which is an indication that your heart rate variability levels are changing. That is a big deal with wellness tracking and nobody else has in anywhere close to the level of in-depth nature with heart rate variability tracking, which Garmin has coined body battery. Next up, advanced recovery time or what Garmin calls improved recovery time. So Koros will track your recovery time based on the rig of your workout. Whoop will look at your heart rate variability the night before and say you're, you're worn down or you're not worn down to approach the next workout. Sunto will give you a version of how much recovery time in the, you know, after the workout. And it's, it's always about half the time it should be. But what Garmin does is it takes the rigor of the workout based on your VO2 max or your fitness level, but just the rigor of the workout, how much time in your max heart rate did you spend in the upper echelon zone? Did you spend a lot of continuous time in the zone five or so much time in zone four? And it gives you like a, a, a rigor number, the training load, but through all the analytics, it also gives you a recovery time just based on the rigor. But about a year, year and a half ago, so a while now, they added in two other components. So if you got a bad night of sleep and if your body battery is severely depleted or your stress is severely high, 
it'll basically say you need to take longer and it'll add hours to your recovery time. That to me is the full spectrum of what you would want from recovery time. Not just to look at the rigor of the one hard workout. This one hour defines how long, but this one hour coupled with your 24 seven day, what you live that day, coupled with the quality of your sleep that night is what determines how long you should wait before you hit a truly hard workout. That is improved recovery time. Next up, we have the fact that Garmin has specialty sports profiles. You know, one thing that I have a hard time with is a lot of watches have 150 special sports profiles. You can track badminton, you can track jump roping, you can track backgammon if you want to on some watches, but they all do nothing but give you a picture. It's just a picture of a kid playing backgammon or a picture of a kid jumping rope or a picture of something related to that sport title, but none of them give you sport-related analytic information. You don't get any information about any of the details of that particular sport. You just get your heart rate, your calories burned. Maybe there's something that's got GPS on, you know, a bobsled picture, but it's not giving you true sports related analytics. Garmin has a whole bunch of sports related profiles that give you detailed things. So like indoor rowing will give you stroke rates. And I think it can connect to a concept to rower. So you can pull in data back and forth across your watch. There's golfing on all the standard higher end models. And the, let me say the mapping as well. The mapping is on the higher end mod models, 955, 400 and up, but golf, it'll actually, I did it earlier. It, found the local courses. I said, I'm going to play on this course. It started me off on hole one. It said, you know, here are the sand trap problems and I don't play golf. So I can't look at it and analyze it that much more. Skiing, ski maps. You can download over 2000 worldwide resort ski maps and it'll track you down the mountain, up the chair lift and back and down. You can see the specifics of your particular runs, mountain biking. So it'll track the flow of the mountain biking and something they call grit and flow, which evaluates the trail difficulty and how smooth you were and the downhill rides and scores your, gives you a score for that particular trail so you can beat the score the next time. That is mountain bike tracking at a whole different level. Surfing, you can obviously, it'll track your waves. It'll track how, how many rate waves you rode and how you rode. I don't know all the details, I'm not a surfer, but it also automatically could connect to a surf line session camera, which will automatically, when you catch the wave, it'll start filming. It connects to this camera that's sitting on the beach, shooting and hunting, fishing, tactical sports. There's all these different specialty sports, uh, even something simple like paddle boarding. It'll track your stroke rate, your distance you covered per stroke as you paddled. And so all those things are next level, very different than just of 450 sports profiles, which really attracts your heart rate, calories, and maybe a distance factor if it's a GPS related and gives you a picture of the sport profile. It makes you feel warm and fuzzy because you have the picture of the sport profile, but it doesn't actually track anything about the sport. Next up, music storage of value. So Apple Watch has got this tied with, you know, what you could connect with as far as not just having storage that you could download mp3s but nobody uses mp3s anymore a very small subset use mp3s most of us are using deezer or amazon music or spotify and all three connect to your garmin watch to download your personal playlist without having to know own or how to access an mp3 and you can listen to all of your favorite songs from those three platforms on your garmin watch that's a big differentiator. Any of like the Huawei, Chorus, I think has music storage. It doesn't matter. That's not, to me, that's not music storage because it does not connect in any functional usefulness in how we listen to music today and how we store our music, typically in a playmaster playlist format on one of the major providers. Next up is something simple. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but it's Garmin Pay. So the ability to take your watch and pay for things at the store. We all have credit cards or debit cards now that swipe. You don't have to touch anything. Apple has Apple Pay. But Garmin is of the sports watches outside of counting, not counting Apple, that, that has Garmin Pay, that has, and obviously not every bank across Europe, I, you know, not everybody's connected, but the ability to use your watch to pay by credit card without having to have your physical credit card through that little electronic connection system. 
that's a big deal. Nobody else has that, at least not Coro, Sunto, and Polar don't have it. And those are the other sort of primary sports watch contenders. And then last, we'll just talk about a sort of a summary area, custom training analytics. So Garmin has trail-based VO2 max so that you get a, a, a better estimate of your VO2 max, your fitness level, when you're not running on flat, smooth ground, but you're running up and down trails with different terrain. They have something called Next Fork, which helps predict. It just tells you where to go when you're on a race, or I think it tells you naturally if you're just on a course what your next forks look like. And if you had laid out a previous map, it's, you know, it just tells you which direction to go. Pace Pro. Pace Pro is actually a cool concept. That not, all these are running things that I don't test because it's CrossFit Channel and CrossFit testing. But Pace Pro will ba basically tell you you have a certain pace across a whole race. And if you're running uphill, because the watch knows you're going uphill on the GPS route, it'll tell you to run the slower. Like it'll give you a goal for what your pace should be based on the grade. And if you're going downhill, it'll give you a goal for how much faster you should be based on the negative grade. And then the last significant thing within this custom training analytics is the stamina feature. The stamina feature is so far just for running and biking but it'll basically evaluate your internal real-time reserves to finish the distance, how much you have left in the tank in real time based on the rigor, based on your heart rate, based on some of those physiological metrics. And that's a big deal because that's a real-time stat where you can say, you know, I wanna push it another two miles and the watch might tell you, you might not have that much left. Or if you know you have a, you know, an out and back type course, how to gauge your speed, your pace, and how hard you're going based on some of the stamina information and feedback you're getting. So these collectively are what is so special about Garmin because these collectively are not really offered or only offered in part or some debilitated format from all the other watchmakers or all the other companies that are out there. Now, the Apple Watch might compete in some of the technical smartwatch e stuff, but they just don't compete in any of the true in-house native to the watch sports and training and wellness tracking. So let's talk about it. You want to find out about what the 265 and the 965 have to offer. And this is that section of the video. So I want to say, because I didn't say at the beginning, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. But what is looking like it's going to be included in the Garmin 400 265 and 965. Okay, let's talk about first the big boy, the 965. Now the big feature of the 965 is the addition of an AMOLED screen. Now there's debate over different specs of the screen, but the fact that you'll get a lower priced watch versus the only current option for full training is the Epix at $1,000. Now you're gonna have a forerunner with an AMOLED screen that's got this big, beautiful, brilliant screen for tracking all the workouts and has good battery life. So let's talk about some of the rumor, rumor mill speculations. I'll tell you one thing that I am excited about that I do think is a more fact on the rumor mill is that it's got a metal bezel. There's rumors that it's gonna be titanium. There's no way at the price points they're talking about it's gonna be titanium, but a metal bezel with an AMOLED screen is gonna make the 955 look like a top end watch because I always did not like the plastic bezel on the 955, and now you add an AMOLED screen. There's another rumor about it having a 1.4 inch AMOLED screen. Now that is the same size screen as the Phoenix 7X Enduro 2 Tactic 7. Not gonna happen. I don't think there's any chance of that. The Epix, which has, an, has a 1.3 inch AMOLED screen. So I don't think we're gonna be pushing the boundaries of a brand new screen coming out, screen technology on top of AMOLED but that would be a blow away dream come true for me. So I think the casing size is gonna be slightly bigger than the 955. I think that there's a rumor and there's some pictures about it having a potential new oval button at the start. So same button layout, but just sort of a different design. There's debate over whether it's gonna have the voice assistance that the Phoenix or the Venue 2 Plus has, but I don't think it will. There's going to be possibly a new interface. So the Venue 2 has a slightly different interaction with the user interface. So I don't think it's just going to be a snapshot exact of the 955 with just an AMOLED screen. I think there'll be a new interface. There's possibly the addition of running dynamics, which I don't track, but running dynamics from the wrist that typically require a pod or a chest strap that tracks those things. 
ground contact, time stride, uh, stride length, vertical oscillation, cadence, things like that. And the, one of the crazy rumors I heard, which I think, oh, a boy can dream, is that it's going to be 23 days of battery life. I don't think that's possible. I think based on the casing size, the AMOLED screen, I think you might get 18 to 20, maybe. I don't know that they could stretch it to 23. I think it's probably going to hit right in that 14 to 16 day battery life that the Epix is really in with the always on display off. Um, but still, you're basically looking, if I was going to summarize what I think will happen, and then I'll tell you the price estimate. What I think will happen is you're going to have a nine, the 965 is going to be a little bit bigger casing than the 955. It's going to have the awesome new, hopefully, bezel, metal bezel with a big 1.3 inch AMOLED display. I do think they'll add in some running dynamics. And overall, I think the button will look a little bit different just to spruce it up a little bit. And the crazy thing about it is the rumor mill is talking about it being $599, which is the same price as the 955 solar i do not think that's going to happen i think it's going to be 649 to 699 i don't think you can add a metal bezel and a full amoled screen and maybe even expand the battery life from what the epix is currently getting and add some running dynamics and still keep it at the same price as the solar variant of the lesser screen quality model I don't know how to, else to say it. So I think it's going to come in at nine six fifty or seven hundred dollars. I think that's a reasonable price point for it. So that's the nine sixty. And then you have the two sixty five and the two sixty five S. So there's basically everybody saying that it's going to come out in both the similar size variant as the two fifty five and the two fifty five S. But as we just talked about, they're going to have an AMOLED screen. I would expect it to keep the same size screen, so one point three inches on the two sixty five and 1.1 on the 265S. Same, similar casing size, 46 millimeter, 265, 42 millimeter, 265S. It's going to have the multi-band GPS, which is still a crazy bargain in this realm of watches because it's not just multi-band, it's Garmin Set IQ using multi-band and some of the, even the higher end watches don't have multi-band. Um, but the other big thing besides the AMOLED release, it's not rumored to have a metal bezel, but the other big thing that is coming up in the rumors is it might be adding training readiness. Now, this is a new primary feature that Garmin has released on the wellness and training side that was only available on the 955 and up. So it's an estimate looking at two 24-hour period health markers or training markers, and then four seven-day period training or health markers and giving you a readiness to fight or to go into a hard workout that day. And it might be actually coming to the 265, not just the AMOLED screen. So that would be a huge feature. Now, the rumor mill has it at $450 to $500. I think they're going to have to push the envelope a little bit, especially if they had training readiness. And I think it's going to be $500 to $550 right in that realm because to jump from $400 for the music version to get AMOLED screen training readiness cool new interface, you got to go a hundred bucks at least. So I think it's going to come at 500 to 550. Um, I don't know that they're going to exclude music and have a music variant and non-music variant. I think they're just going to keep music with all of it and maybe have a smaller internal battery size for how much music you can store. So those are the rumor mill talks. I wanted to bring it to everybody because I think this is actually a huge release. It's actually a big deal because I do think this is the future of wearables in the real training world. And now Garmin is adding them and they're doing it well with long battery life, really good interfaces, really snappy screen movement, and all of the quality training and wellness analytics that Garmin has already been bringing to the sports and training world. So with that, that is what is so special about Garmin. That is the rumor mill talk of the 965 and 265. And before I forget, like this video if you give it a thumbs up if you like the video. But besides that, when is this thing going to possibly come out? There's first there was rumors of it coming out in March, and then recently there's been rumors of it being released in the next couple of weeks, which is so exciting. I don't know what the Garmin schedule is. I have no intel on any of these things, but I would say it would be awesome. To have it in the next couple of weeks, I think would be likely to have it by March. Yes, that would be more likely. But keep your eyes peeled on the Garmin website. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think the specs are going to look like on the 965 or 265 or what you think is special about Garmin. And with that, we'll wrap it up.
It's Vic, your hunter. Thanks so much for watching.